lovely weird and wacky sounds from Bill Bruford of Hello. King Crimson. Hello. First of all, can you explain to me this pad, the one you didn't hit? Yes, I can. This, this avoids a lot of knob twiddling over on the main unit, mm. which you're leaning on. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll get back. Tell and, me. And allows me uh, my choice of 16 drum sets, which um, we've taken from the main unit, which draws 99. Right, and that's 16 choices per pad, I gather. Yes, it is, and I can recall them just by pressing like so. Right. I notice you've got the kit set up around you, like an acoustic kit would yes. be set up. Does yes. that mean that you, you call these pads by their equivalent drum names? Yes. Like the one on the floor is the bass drum. Indeed. It's a place to start. I mean, any pad can be anything, so it helps if we start by calling this the snare drum, the bass drum, and so forth. Okay. Can we, can we listen to one or two of the sort of sounds that you've selected on different ones, say starting with the tom-tom? Well, certainly. This, this drum up here sounds like this on program one, but then, of course, it might sound if we take 14, which is more or less at random. Mm -hmm. Completely different. Indeed, and anything like in a, between. Like a steel drum. Mm -hmm. uh, and how about this bass drum here? Bass drum on one. It's yeah, a fairly nice normal. Nice dead thud. Mm -hmm. Nice thud, actually. With 14, it has a lot of decay and, and white noise wound into it. And you work it with a conventional foot pedal? That's correct, yeah. Right. How about a hi-hat? Well, a hi-hat used one. to be on a stalk, of course, with mm -hmm. cymbals on top. This is another version. It's um, a Simmons hi-hat. It's sounds like a sewing machine <laughs> pedal, to be honest. Sounds like that when you depress it. Yeah. And when wired through this pad here, sounds like... <laughs> the usual still a, thing. still a metallic sound, though, like In, a hi-hat. Very much so. And presumably you've got a bank of cymbals that I can't see? Yes, or we have some, some metals, yeah. Yes. <laughs> mm, nice. What first got you interested in electronic drums? Well, uh, when we were reconvening King Crimson, the group I'm in, in 1981, um, the rest of the team were, of course, getting very involved with guitar synthesis. Mm. Um, and the drummer looked around, obviously, and, and didn't, not wanting to be left out, naturally knocked on Dave Simmons' door. Yeah. And up comes this kind of equipment, which allows me to have a much broader, broader palette with which to... I uh, expect it took a bit of getting used to, though, didn't it? Oh, After an acoustic some, suddenly... yes, it does. There are different playing surfaces, very much so. What does it feel like to play? Because it looks as though you're just hitting a tabletop. Well, the playing surfaces are kind of hard rubber, which is very comfortable to play. Mm. It's very like the kind of uh, practice pad that most drummers spend their working mm. lives at, and it <coughs> rebounds the stick <coughs> very quickly, a, a, a quicker than an acoustic drum set, where you have to work somewhat harder to pick the sticks up mm. off it. Do you still feel in control of the sort of sound that the, the kit is giving out? Oh, yes. In fact, you need, you need to control it a lot. I mean, it's a big beast and it's got a lot of sound in, involved in it. You must program and select all the, all the drum sounds that you want, store them in here, mm. recall them here. You can take the sound out of the back on just a stereo left and right feed, yeah. pass it to the sound mixer or sound engineer, and he gets what you have programmed. It's very much you're in control. But that's on the actual pre-setting. What about when it actually comes down to playing, the feel? If you want to hit them yes. hard or soft, does that mm -hmm. register? Very much so. They're touch sensitive, as we say, and depending on what you've programmed into the main controller, sound will change depending on how hard you hit. You hit them. Exactly. Right. Now, you've got this wonderful setup. Presumably mm. you now don't have to be limited to just making drum sounds. No, that's true. I mean, these are drumistic. These are still what we would call close to being drum sounds. But I know Dave and, and his company are working for the future a lot on all kinds of, of sound, any, any sound being used rhythmically. Well, we'll hear some of those right now. Thanks, Bill. Mac. Well, the country that makes these electronic drums exports to over 40 different countries, in fact, 85% of their production, and is one of the few British companies that export high technology to Japan. Dave Simmons, the inventor and of the technology, runs the kind, he runs the company. Dave, how did you start? Well, like Bill, I was uh, slogging around the circuit in various unknown groups. Um, and the group I was playing with, we had a drummer, naturally, and he was pretty bored with hitting uh, dead animal skins. So <laughs> being interested in electronics and music, I put together something that he could play and we could make some uh, nice sounds with. Well, how do they work? Inside each drum that Bill was uh, hitting is a tiny transducer. I've got one here that... <coughs> that's a whiskey bottle. Empty. Very familiar sound. Yeah, empty one, of course. Um, <laughs> And he hits the drum, the transducer gives out the signal, the computer says, oh, someone's hit me, I better do something, and it outputs the appropriate sound that's been set up by the user previously. Well, there's th effectively three computers here. How much power, there seems to be about 12 channels on that, how much power is there in that in computer terms? It's a modular system, so uh, it can take 12 channels, we've got eight here. And the sound storage for each channel can be anywhere between 8 and 32 kilobytes. There's a ROM sitting inside. In that particular unit, there's one and a half megabytes of ROM. 
and it's mixed in with analog sounds and filtering and noise to make uh, other drum sounds. Well, the, I'm sure you've been asked this question a hundred times. The drum devices themselves, why are they hexagonal and not round? I've also been asked about six times in rehearsal this, but <laughs> same story. Uh, we had a couldn't afford a circular saw, so we bought a straight saw instead. Uh, but no, seriously, anybody that sees the hexagonal shape on TV knows it's a Simmons kit, and that's, as a company, what we want. What other sounds can you use? This little unit here, called a sampling unit, actually samples acoustic sounds and blows the proms so that we can use any sound now for, for, for percussion. They're not limited to drum-like sounds anymore. And I've got a few here. I can just tap. And, of course, we could sample a sound now if you're, you're game for it. Oh, I'm, I'm game for anything. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the obligatory dog. <laughs> <laughs> Chihuahua. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. That, I'm getting really creative today. I'm not only an artist, I'm a singer. Right, I'll press the button and we'll make some music. Great. What, that, what is that doing? That's this, is, this is a computer which uh, hits the drum rather better than Bill does. <laughs> oh. Oh. Don't hit him, Bill. And we're putting the dog. <laughs> and we can change the sounds. And we can stop it. <laughs> well done. How far are we along, Bill? Are we just at the beginning or are we going to see a lot in the future? Well, I think we should terminate our relationship right <laughs> here and now. <laughs> Obviously, we go as far as Dave's uh, imagination can go. I think um, electronic drums are about the same position that electric guitar was at in 1949, 1950.